On the morning of August 13th, I had my usual routine where I wake up, drink a cup of coffee, and peruse the newest things that have popped up into my feed on YouTube. One such thing that popped up was an old archival visit video from Conan O'Brien where he goes to Intel's headquarters in 2007. Now, immediately I knew this wasn't a coincidence. You see, a lot of the times, the random old archival clips that pop up on Team Coco's YouTube channel are clearly not a coincidence. Now, they, they've been able to get access over the rights of Conan's work over the past, like, 30 years. And so what Team Coco does to promote Conan O'Brien is just put out something from the 90s or 2000s, just little 2- to 10-minute clips every day to keep Conan's name viral. But it's obvious it's obvious sometimes you'll see some interview, um, you know, with like Harrison Ford and, well, you know what happens, happens that they put that clip out on his birthday. And sometimes it goes even further. You will see old celebrity interviews pop up when an A-list star, like Brad Pitt or something, has a new movie coming out on that same day. It's clearly not a coincidence. Sometimes there are clearly some celebrities and comedians and companies paying Team Coco to make some of those old archival clips come out on a day they want their name to be shared a lot. Now that brings me to Intel. You see, in that original clip, Conan O'Brien actually says before he starts that little uh, visit of Intel joke montage uh, that Intel paid him to visit them. And look, I, I love Conan O'Brien. You don't need to, but I do. He's one of my favorite comedians. But I don't think I would pay Conan O'Brien to make my company look good. He basically spends the entire clip talking about how Intel is a company that seems to treat its employees badly and they work long hours and it's a droll place to work at. He even ends the whole thing making a joke basically that New Yorkers are more interested in a small noodle shop than anything having to do with Intel. So... In other words, what's my point? What marketing team would be dumb enough to pay for this to pop up while they talk about Z? Well, probably the same one that was dumb enough to have him talk about it all the way back when Intel was actually doing well with their Core 2 series. And to be completely honest, that is one thing I noticed that I don't think anyone else has talked about. Another example of how, as I covered in my last mega video, Intel's marketing team has no clue what they are doing. And that's mostly what I have to say because in my opinion, the August 13th presentation from Intel, and I'm not trying to dunk on them or hate here, showed us nothing. It showed us absolutely nothing we don't know. Certainly nothing I haven't heard for months. I mean, look guys, Tiger Lake will be a little better than Renoir, probably depending on the app you use it for. Tiger Lake will be good, but I, I think it's gonna be short-lived with how many superior APUs AMD has coming out over the next, I mean, I don't know, the next two years or longer. And starting, I believe, before the end of this year, they will have some pretty impressive new APUs coming out, as I've alleged in a lot of recent videos. But yeah, I guess what I'm saying is don't entirely count Intel out when it comes to some limited, interesting CPU releases. Those are cool. And while I fully expect everybody to keep making fun of Intel's 10 nanometer super fin presentations, I am told that their 10 nanometer process is significantly better than before. Expect greater availability of Tiger Lake. Expect their yields to be far above what people ever expect them to get to. But you know, people don't expect a lot out of Intel 10 nanometer because they've been lying to us for so long. So they have to prove it. And again, well, I am consistently told that their 10 nanometer yields, that this will be a real node for the next year. I am also consistently told that no one should ever expect it to get to Skylake level of yields or early Zen 2 yields, you know, 70%, that it's probably always going to be just a little better than Broadwell at most. But that's all they got for the time being until they can secure some capacity at TSMC. And when it comes to Z, yeah, I... I, there's not much else to say, is there? I mean, I can totally believe that Intel will have a single tile solution meant for low power laptops, probably a, 
how would you think of this? Like a 1650 Max Q class competitor card before the end of this year. All of my information going back an entire year ago was that one tile solutions from Intel should be very efficient and that they should be able to compete. But Honestly, I think they'll just barely be able to compete. I mean, NVIDIA has 1650 Ti Max Qs out right now that use 35 watts. I think at best, Intel is going to be a little bit better than that, and I would be surprised if they can be better than the true RDNA 2 and Ampere replacements to that. Outside of that, them talking about a more powerful discrete Z solution coming out next year, Again, I've talked about this literally a year ago where I said that a two-tile solution from Intel could potentially get to around a GTX 1080 depending on how good the 10 nanometer process gets. And there are recent rumors circulating behind the scenes that the two-tile solution Intel is working on could maybe be around as good as an RTX 2070. And so I do want to talk about that for a second as well. Okay, Intel getting a two-tile solution around a 2070 um, but I've heard their two tile solution right now uses 150 watts because again, it uses far more energy than the 50 watt single tile. Um, that may sound impressive, a 150 watt 2070. Until you realize it's probably next year. It's really only going to be good if Intel manages to get out a better on every front than we expect two tile card. Early. In other words, instead of it being around a 2070 using 150 watts next year, they need to get out a slightly better than 2070 120 watt card for, in my opinion, $200 early next year. If they can do that, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that can compete with the RX 6500 XT or the 3050 Ti or whatever NVIDIA calls that class of card. Maybe it can compete with that, but... Any later than that, any more power usage, any weaker performance. And again, Intel's not competing with Turing. Turing is built on 12 nanometer from a couple years ago. Intel is going to be competing with next gen cards. And that's how good it's going to have to be to compete. And I'm just skeptical. Frankly, the conclusion I'm coming to about Intel Z is that if they've actually had these two and four tile solutions, even if they use too much energy, they just need to try to have the most polished drivers in history to at least get that going for their brand and get something out as soon as possible. The longer they wait, the longer what they're waiting to release will be even more inferior to whatever AMD and NVIDIA's newest products are. It is my opinion that, look, NVIDIA's been doing this forever and so has Radeon. If Intel wants to compete in discrete graphics, they just have to get something out and then commit to pricing it competitively and getting iterations out after it and slowly make that climb to the high end. You're not going to defeat AMD or NVIDIA with your first generation. That's just not going to happen, Intel. These people have too much experience. Get something out now. And for the love of God, fix your marketing. Letting Conan O'Brien run around your offices with kids laughing at how boring you guys are is not good marketing. But you know who can do good marketing? NVIDIA who seems to really be preparing for an all-out onslaught of both new high-performance cards and marketing in about a month from now. And I really don't have any major updates to this. I, everything, I've, I've seen Adored's latest video where he alleges maybe it's on Samsung 5 nanometer. I don't know. To me, that sounds unlikely. Uh, but whatever it is, just keep in mind... That 5 nanometer from Samsung is less efficient than TSMC 7. So they will be at a slight disadvantage on Node to that no matter what. But maybe they don't care. Either way, my information is that it's on 8 nanometer and that their professional lineup, the upper end of it, is on 7. And so they'll be able to paper launch those cards. I suspect the 3090 is a 20 or 22 gigabyte 7 nanometer cut down Titan that will be in limited numbers compared to the mass produced 3080. But again, only Jensen knows what the final products are as i've been told by basically every source the shall i say corporate espionage between amd and nvidia is getting to comedic levels i think at the end of the day you've just got to keep in mind this will be a competitive fall and a lot of things that weren't on the table before will be on the table sooner than i think a lot of people expected with how underwhelming turing was which gets me to a final point of this video 
I just think that it's time for people to start really asking themselves what they want out of a next generation graphics product, whether whether a console or a desktop gaming graphics card. I think it's time for people to actually sit down and ask themselves, you know what, let's hope or let's just assume our wildest dreams come true. What am I actually willing to pay? And the reason I bring this up is I've asked a couple of friends about this and you know, like one will say, well, if they could double my performance for $400, I think I'll get a card. And I'm like, well, you have a Vega 56 to this friend, right? And he's like, yeah. Yeah, look, um, if the mid-range Ampere cards come even remotely close to a 2080 Ti, they're basically going to almost double your Vega 56 performance probably for around $400 if there's a lot of competition. So that's worth it then? You just spend $400 to get that level of performance? And that friend went, actually, I don't know if I really care. I have another friend who says he's just going to make do with his Vega 64 because, well, he just wants to get Zen 3, turn down settings, and have high frame rates. I think it's time for everybody to sit down and ask themselves what they want because significantly better ray tracing is coming. Remember, I've detailed that Ampere should have three to five times the ray tracing performance of Turing, even if it was half of what I reported. Basically, ray tracing at all resolutions at higher levels than you've had before will be a really obtainable thing, even in lower high-end or some mid-range cards. I mean, I myself am one of those people in the camp where I don't need the best graphics. I have a good high-end card for right now, probably not for too many more months. And I, I just don't care. I, I, I'm happy to play my games, turn down some settings. It's about the games I can play. I'm going to wait for the dust to settle. But once that dust does settle, I know that there's going to be a lot of options that people were acting like was unobtainable before without spending three grand. It won't be three grand anymore, and it will be obtainable. So start thinking ahead of time about what you actually want out of a graphics card. And I think this is something I'm going to start talking about a lot more in the coming weeks as the onslaught of RDNA 2 and Ampere information continues to come out. And I will continue to cover it. So remember to subscribe to this channel, ring the bell button. If you enjoy my videos, please share them. That helps so much. If you have the extra money, but only if you do, consider supporting me on Patreon. Without my patrons, I couldn't afford to do any of this. And you get access to a Discord. Certain tiers get access to ad-free early podcasts, exclusive podcasts, the ability to spit mail and questions to guests that I have on air. Consider it. And of course, thank you for watching and enjoy your weekend.